So um, this, by the way, if you recollect, uh, is from the previous uh, simple web client where the service was automatically stopped. So once we start the EGB service, this existing service will actually replace it. So let's go to the OSGI console. And we're going to go to shell. There are several ways of managing OSGI bundles in the uh, OSGI uh, in the Glassfish um, uh, environment. So what I'm showing you here is yet another way on how you can manage these bundles very easily. So click on shell and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say install and to this the advantage of this is each bundle may not be in OBR or OSGI bundle repository. So this allows me to install bundles that are existing elsewhere uh, on my file system. So if I go back to my NetBeans, you can see it's um, installing this bundle over here. So I'm going to copy this URL, ejb underscore service dot jar. This is my OSGI bundle. Go back to the administration console. This is a URI. So I say file colon and I give it the complete location as you can see. Once I hit it, I give the command, I enter it, and here it says my bundle ID is 210. So that's pretty cool, okay? Now once the bundle has been installed, I need to start it explicitly. So I say start 210, and then my bundle is now started. So that's pretty cool. Um, now the OSGI bundle has started, let's inspect how we can look at the service capabilities of this bundle, what services are being exposed by this bundle. So I say inspect S, C, S being for service, C being for capability. I'm going to give the bundle ID and boom, we say inspect SC. So let's try to understand the output that is shown over here. Um, first of all, you know, you can see that this service is implementing the interface, which uh, user auth service interface, which by the way is coming from our common package. Um, each service in the OSGI registry is given a unique service ID, which is explained over here. And while EJB, well, Glassfish is registering this EJB as an OSGI service, uh, it in addition also registers the uh, JNDI name. So basically what we have is a transactional, secure, uh, persistence aware um, service or OSGI service that is available in the OSGI registry, which other OSGI clients can very use. And this is a very powerful feature that allows Glassfish users to expose OSGI services uh, or EJB service, EJB is very easily as a OSGI service, literally by just writing a single line of code. Okay, so let's go back to our web client now, which is over here, and click on our simple web client interface. Now imagine if we, since we were using a database as a persistence layer, there is no database, there is no data in the database. So let's click on register first, and I'm going to say Java one, Java one. And when I click on register this time, bingo. So our service, which was stopped earlier, is very easily hot swapped with this new service. Now this time though, it's coming from an EJB layer and it's going to the database layer. So as in our earlier service, all the data was stored in a hash map, so everything was getting lost. Now you have some enterprise capabilities in your OSGI service, and that is available using EJBs that are available as part of Java E6. So imagine your client continued to run. Um, if the service was down, it got a very user-friendly message. The service came up again, and the client is working again. So that's really the true dynamism of OSGI. And on the lower layer, you actually are getting all the transactional uh, persistence uh, facility uh, to a typical OSGI service. So that kind of concludes our um, EG EJB service part of it. So far, you have seen a simple OSGI client talking to a simple OSGI service. Then we replace the client by an enterprise client, which is a WAB, talking to the same OSGI, simple OSGI service. Then we hot swap the OSGI service by, by an enterprise grade OSGI service, which is backed by an EJB talking to a database using persistence, and the WAB continued to work. That we think is a very powerful uh, technique in itself. Now, if you recollect, in the course of developing the WAB, you have to write uh, some code that deals with locating a service and uh, using it. We feel that that those kind of boilerplate code can be uh, taken out, is not needed with the powerful dependency injection framework like CDI being available in the EE platform. So for that reason, we have made available another advanced web client which talks about uh, use of CDI 
to inject OSGI services in web clients. So that's available in the solutions folder. So this is the scenario we are talking about. Yes. So in the solutions folder you have S31352 where you find a solutions and the advanced web client. There you see all the sources and everything is part of that. Just browse the sources, build. It's a full fledged uh, uh, application with the palm.xml properly set up. Build it, deploy it in the technique that Arun has so far demonstrated, and use it. The more documentation is available in the, available in the instructions uh, folder. Okay. And you have any more questions about using these technologies, please uh, uh, shoot us questions at users at glassface.dev.java.net. Uh, all the uh, OSGI slash Java E related information can be obtained by you know, from our wiki page, which is wiki.sun.com slash display slash glassface slash OSGI. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the session.